The Third Chamber of Congress. In 1787, the U.S. Congress was created on the bedrock of a great compromise that established a system of checks and balances within the legislative branch itself. The founders knew that the greatest danger to a democracy emerging from tyranny was falling victim to its own form of tyranny, the tyranny of the majority. This became clear during early negotiations to determine the structure of Congress. Delegates from small states made it clear that a House of Representatives on its own would be a deal breaker. The interests of the smaller states would simply be drowned out by the larger states. To appease big states and small states alike, two chambers were carved out of Congress, the House of Representatives, giving large states proportional representation to their size, and the Senate, two senators per state, regardless of population size, to ensure the interests of each state could be voiced equally. This was an important breakthrough in finding a way through what seemed to be insurmountable division and polarization amongst the founders. Fast forward two plus centuries and, well, we're polarized all over again. But this time, our belonging to individual states seems less relevant in defining our shared interests. This is easy to see by simply looking at any recent election map. Densely populated cities, sprawling suburbs, and isolated rural areas, regardless of state, seem to align to the same candidates. And for good reason. People who live in cities have a lot in common. They live on top of each other and need more rules to make sure they can do so in harmony. Folks in rural areas are less on top of each other, and so they seek, and can deal with, a bit more freedom to work things out independently of government. Similar commonalities can be found based on socioeconomic status. Wealthy people and working class people are looking for different things from their government. In order to recognize and represent these new alignments, we're proposing a new Chamber of Congress. We call it the Assembly of Shared Interests, a third Chamber of Congress. This chamber would be even smaller than the Senate, 27 members total, with each member representing citizens that fall into one of 27 possible categories based on a combination of community type or population density, wealth, and income. Each member would be elected by the people that fall into each of these demographic categories, regardless of their geographics. As the newest, smallest, and most representative chamber of Congress, the Assembly of Shared Interests would presume all of the duties currently in the hands of the Senate, confirming Supreme Court justices, overseeing removal proceedings for impeached presidents, and so on. And as a result of moving from a bicameral to a tricameral legislature, we would open up multiple new pathways to successfully passing laws. Instead of only one way to get a bill to the president's desk, House and Senate agreement, there would now be four ways, House, Senate, House Assembly, Senate Assembly, or all three chambers together. Even better, the threat of any single chamber being left out of what gets presented to the president creates a new incentive for each chamber to constructively collaborate. This is perhaps one of the most unique proposals in the Reconstitution, and we acknowledge it is radical. Our hope is that it both opens up a conversation about how to account for the new political fault lines of our republic, and that it breaks open the imagination of the American people to consider the full spectrum of what is possible when we get creative about what a politics of the future can be. What do you think? Comment below or join us for our fourth constitutional conversation on Thursday, August 11th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, where we'll discuss this more broadly to integrate your feedback as we continue to revise and refine the language of the Reconstitution. Join the conversation. See you there.